As mentioned in the intro, anytime we're talking about a network programmability concept, for the most part, we are going to apply those to software-defined networking solutions. It's not to say that we can't apply programmability concepts to a standardly deployed network, uh, but at the same time, most of our conversations are going to be driven towards SDN solutions. So just to kick this whole programmability conversation off, let's go ahead and explore what exactly a software-defined network looks like and also how does Cisco uh, tie into these SDN concepts. So what exactly is software-defined networking? Well, for the most part, this is going to boil down to a few key concepts. First of all, as the name might imply, it's a very software-driven methodology for deploying our networks. This means we care more about the software and how it's configured as opposed to the hardware. Now it's interesting because we still, at the end of the day, we're going to need a hardware solution in order to run any kind of network, especially a software-defined network infrastructure. We're going to need what we call the underlay. This is going to be the traditional network hardware that's all connected usually to run some kind of IP routed network. Effectively what we're doing with the underlay is we're just trying to make sure that all of the hardware in the network can get to each other and they know where each other are, hence a routing environment. Then the software is going to go onto this layer three network and build out whatever topology in software that we want. And the primary mechanism for this is going to be tunnels. And so we're, we can create truly whatever infrastructure we want in a data center environment, we can use VXLAN tunnels in order to extend layer two. In fact, Cisco takes this outside of the data center and they leverage VXLAN tunnels in an SDN solution called Software Defined Access, which we'll be talking about here in a little bit. Now at the heart of any SDN solution is going to be the software controller. The controller is going to be really what runs the software and it's going to be a single point of management for us as network engineers. Generally speaking, we're going to manage this via some kind of graphical user interface, although some controllers do still support CLI access. But ultimately the controller is going to push the configuration on our behalf to the networking devices. And typically the way this is going to uh, do this is by leveraging APIs. So us as the administrators of the network, we're going to log into this controller and give it some kind of desire. And this is the interesting thing about this, is usually we're not saying how to do something. Like today, if I were to say, hey, uh, we need to block access, let's just say from IP address A to IP address B, these two IP addresses cannot communicate with one another, we need to stop it. What are we going to do? We're going to go in there and we're going to configure, let's just say access control lists in order to make this happen. And in this case, I care a lot about the how. How am I gonna get in there and stop IP address A from talking to IP address B? And the conclusion we're probably all going to draw is, well, let's go in there and configure an access control list. Well, in these intent-based software-defined networks, we're not doing the how anymore. We don't worry about whether this is an access control list or a VLAN access control list or uh, any other derivative of access control list, I suppose. Uh, maybe a route map policy, who knows, right? How we do go about doing this is no longer our concern. Instead, we care about the what, namely this, that IP address A cannot communicate with IP address B. We tell the controller what it is we want to accomplish and the controller tells the devices how to make that happen. And one of the beautiful things about this is the fact that if I decide that IP address A and IP address B, that they can now talk to one another, well, I go in there and I tell the controller that, and it's going to, guess what? It's going to actually remove whatever it is. Maybe it was an access control list. It's going to remove the policy. And sometimes removing old policy is one of the hardest parts about managing a network is we don't like to remove things. We're a little bit scared that we're going to remove something that's actually still in use. And as a result of this, we're going to have very clean network configurations in this environment, meaning only configurations that are relevant and in use will actually be deployed onto the devices. Now, one fascinating part about SDN is that the controller and the devices, these can all be different vendors. Maybe we find a controller vendor that we really love. And so we're going to go deploy their controller. And then, you know, we're still Cisco shop, so we still like... Uh, Cisco network switches and routers, and so we're going to deploy Cisco or whatever this vendor is, we're going to deploy that at the hardware level. Uh, furthermore, by the way, this doesn't just have to be one vendor. We could deploy vendors B and C and D, and maybe it's just whoever happens to be selling their switches on sale this month is the vendor that we go out and purchase. But this is at least one of the SDN dreams, is that we can now support a multi-vendor environment, and we would never have to worry about any kind of of incompatibilities. Because today, if I were to go out there and say, hey, you know what, we're going to deploy some Cisco switches 
and some Arista switches and some Dell switches and some HP switches and all kinds of different vendors, uh, we're going to have all kinds of problems in this environment because not all of these switches are going to be compatible with one another. I mean, yeah, they can all speak Ethernet, but only some can speak EIGRP, for example, and, and some are speaking CDP and some are speaking LLDP. And spanning tree protocol is vastly different among the uh, different vendors with how they implement it. And so we end up with a lot of problems in this space from a multi-vendor perspective. But again, SDN gets rid of all of this for us because the controller is where the configuration really matters and it pushes the configuration down to all of the hardware on our behalf. Now that said, this vision of SDN, even though this is one of the dreams, it never really became a reality. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later. But, but more often than not, what we're going to find is that we have this concept of prepackaged SDN solutions. And what I mean by that is that we are no longer going to have a multi-vendor environment. We're going to have a controller, and that's going to come from one vendor, meaning in our case, we're going to learn about Cisco solutions. And then we're going to have hardware, meaning network switches, network routers, all of these fi uh, devices, firewalls, etc. And then guess what? That's going to come from the same vendor, in our case, Cisco. And so Cisco is going to put together some of these prepackaged solutions for us, and we're, it's going to make it a whole lot simpler for us to deploy SDN because it's all one deal. And Cisco has three primary solutions in this space. The first of which, which is the relevant one for us, is going to be the application-centric infrastructure, or ACI. ACI is designed to go into the data center, and the controller that they use in this solution is known as the Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, or the APIC. Now, the other two solutions exist outside the data center. However, it's important that we at least understand what these solutions are, especially as we try to become more well-rounded design engineers. For example, in the campus environment, we have software-defined access. And what this means is that we're going to be deploying SDA out to where our distribution switches and our access switches exist from a campus perspective. This is the solution I mentioned earlier, which is going to use VXLAN, and that's really important. Because in a campus environment, again, we're talking about access layer switches here, and access layer switches tend to operate in layer two mode. And so we need the ability to extend VLANs across this layer three underlay that we're building, and so that's where VXLAN is going to come into play. Now the controller we use here is known as the DNA Center Controller. And so we can expect to hear a little bit more about this acronym DNA the more we talk about this software-defined access solution. Now number three is going to be what we call software-defined WAN. As the name implies, this is going to be inside of the wide area network space. It's going to more or less glue all of our different WAN circuits together as one underlay, and then we deploy a software-defined WAN infrastructure over the top of it. It's a really beautiful architecture. The controller that we're going to use is a controller that Cisco calls the vManage solution. And so at the end of the day, from a DCID perspective, if we need to know about any of these solutions, it's going to be the top one, which is ACI. And we did already spend some time in this course talking about ACI. We're not going to drill in the specifics of ACI during this skill. However, if you want to learn more about ACI and you happen to skip those skills, then be sure to go back and watch the, those skills earlier on in this course to learn all about what ACI is and what it can do for us. So the main takeaway here is that these software-defined networking solutions, it's really about how they're architected. We have this uh, network controller that's going to be the heart of any system. And that's running the software, and we're talking about software-defined networking, that's running the software that's really going to become, effectively, our new network. The way that becomes our new network is we build out this concept of an underlay, that would be the hardware, and then we build an overlay on top of that. The, the software is going to take care of both layers, but for the most part, what we care most about is the overlay, because the overlay becomes whatever network topology that we desire, and it's all built on top of that underlay hardware. Now, as we said at the very end, Cisco has three different prepackaged solutions. ACI is going to be the one that we care most about relative to the DCID and in our data center designs. However, understand that in the campus environment, we have the software-defined access solution, that would be SDA, and in the WAN space, we have software-defined WAN or SD-WAN. I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe to CBT Nuggets and click the notification bell to make sure that you're aware of every time we post new content. If you're interested in a career in IT or you want to brush up on your IT skills, then swing over to our website and while you're there, be sure to sign up for a free trial.